Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. On to the Nosis vlog. It is now, oh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, one minute into the, uh, 16th day of November, uh, 2021. And this is the beginning, well, this is the second uh, video on the Gnosis vlog. Uh, primarily because the first uh, Gnosis vlog is the same as the observation vlog. So they're going to be, they're going to be in the, in the, uh, a playlist itself, the, the two are going to look exactly the same because they are. And what happens is we talked before, we talk about how Gnosis is the hidden part of the world. The imperial world part of the world are always Gnostic. They have the belief in gods above. In other words, this is the, the, the woke who who only consider the real world, the conscious world, never consider the never considers the higher the higher conscious. And this is where Ram Dass uh, actually comes into play. Timothy Leary is there to a bit, but it's primarily Ram Dass. Ram Dass produces Dr. Wheel. He also produces Dr. Oz. He produces Oprah. And he produces the entire feel-good uh, spectrum of things. And out of this comes uh, two different groups, one known as the Rajneesh, the Rajneeshes, and, um, and the Raelians. The, the Harry Christians are there, but they kind of take a back seat to all these the, the, these two particular ones. The, uh, the Rajneesh, who are literally global, and the Raelians, who are based in Montreal. And it centers around these ashrams, these gurus, uh, who create these philosophies and ideas. These are, they are um, prophets who have been given certain wisdom and they're imparting their wisdom on others. Of course, you know, when you have someone of that nature, the prophet... You know, women, so to speak, flock to them in order to have their to have their children, so that the progeny, that the offspring, becomes some form of, well, maybe son of the prophet or son of God. Because these people, these uh, these people at the core of these cults are deified, and of course, in order to keep the cult together, to keep it going, to sort of have it evolve, it needs children to do this. And you ask yourself, why are people passing around children? Why is there such a demand for the trafficking of children? Because you have these cults, and there's a lot of them out there, who, in order to keep these prophets going, need these children. They need to be able to, be, to sort of go, in many cases, procreate with them. I mean, no no person, in terms of an older person, an older woman, is necessarily going to uh, procreate with a uh, an 80-year-old man or a 70-year-old man. Uh <laughs> The only way to do it is you drug the kid and you do what you need to do in terms of uh, get particularly the girl uh, getting her pregnant and then she has the baby she's considered to be like you know uh, uh, you know the, the the honored guest and so on and so forth and she produces the child the child becomes the most important thing and away you go uh, the Dalai Lama is like this this is how the Dalai Lama works is they go globally uh, the uh, Buddhists from Tibet globally to see who is going to be the next Buddha. But again, as you look into the history of this, you start things aren't exactly on the up and up. Let's say there are issues and red flags that kind of pop up and say, "Hmm, I wonder about this." Uh, and unfortunately, this is where you have people like uh, Bill Maher who come up with this whole thing of religiousness. Uh, re religious is typically aimed at the Christians, but most people who aim at Christians in terms of their uh, railing against Christians have no formal understanding of Christianity. The Christianity that they rail against is the Western Christianity. The Western Christianity emerges with the papacy at about a thousand AD, a thousand years after Christ. It is not connected to Christ. And you, you, you sat down and read through the gospel, you would understand that it's not connected to Christ. This is why a majority of the time they spend their focus on the school called Bible Thumbers, they focus on the Old Testament. Why? They're focusing on punishment, crime and punishment. And this focus is something that, that is difficult to sort of 
ignore because it's very violent, very brutal. But if you go into, into the New Testament, you begin to understand that this is not the case, that this is something you know fundamentally different, that there is a a shift in, in, in the focus that, that, that what Christ was doing was condemning those who ruled by law. I mean, this is this is why Christ was put to put to death. People, you know, look at Christ, and why was he put to death? Because he was anti-establishment from the from the earthly perspective, from from the physical perspective. He was anti-establishment. He was saying the priests aren't needed, the the the, the church isn't needed. He says the only thing this was his rule. How do you be a good Christian? You take up your cross. You you deny yourself. Uh, selflessness, humility. Pick up your cross, deal with your struggles, and follow after me. That was it. The final part in terms of the final judgment, what is it? That you do to the least of me, you do to th that you do to the least of men. You, men is is anthropomorphic. It means both men, men, and women, men and women gen, uh, in terms of the gender. And follow uh, that you do to the least of men, you do to me. In other words, uh, if Christ is God. When you attack a whore or, or, or whatever you want to call this person who is not, you know, abiding by the law, and this is what they would do in terms of stoning people and so on and so forth. Well, what are you doing? You were attacking. You were attacking Christ. You were attacking. You were attacking God. In other words, here's God associating himself with the lowest former person on on earth. And this is this is where racism comes from. It's because it was it was believed that these lower classes weren't fully human, and of course. These dark people weren't fully human either. So th it wasn't just the, the dark people who weren't fully human. It was also the people within the societies. At the lowest level, they were considered to be highly flawed. They were, these are the ones who needed to be corrected. And these were the defectives. Well, sometimes you have to go to the bathroom, so that's uh, where I was. Uh, anyways, that's uh, five minutes off. <clears throat> and I was saying, what happens is the Catholics created the whole sense of a physical world and kept the spiritual world, the 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 uh, results of heaven, just for them. In other words, they became an establishment unto themselves, and they followed pretty much after the Jews. The Jews, who at the time were not just the Jews, they weren't a <clears throat> Let me define this properly here. It has nothing to do with anti-Semitism. Jews at the time of the Bible, at the, at the Gospel, were a religious sect. And this, one of the sects included the Canaanites. Uh, uh, the Canaanites were the ones who have Baal, Baphomet, and often fall follow within the, the line of Judaica because uh, they these uh, basically these pagans hid themselves within the within the uh, the, the the Jewish Church. What well, became the Jewish Church? Um, so they hid themselves amongst the people, the the the, the, the Jewish people, and then again it, the Jews this time were were, were basically. Uh, a sect within Hebrew, so there you have the Hebrew, you have the the nationality, the sort of the ethnicity, if you will, would be, and your genetics would be Hebrew. Uh, you would have uh, several parts of society, and this includes uh, the names that came out that are still around today: uh, the Kohen, uh, Cohen, the Cohen or Kohanes would be your priestly class. Uh, Levites would be another form of uh, cleric. Then you have your scribes. You have a number of different rankings in terms of the establishment within the Jewish society. And this is, again, within the religion. Well, the, the religion and the theology uh, creates a structure, this sort of uh, an existence that's outside of nationalities. Uh, Jewishness is not a nationality, it's a belief. So if you say, well, let's say uh, George Soros, right? You go back into his history, you find that um, uh, he he was the one he joined his father in turning in other Jews. 
Well, this is this is what you wouldn't have him have you say that he's not actually a Jew, but rather he is of Jewish descent because he no longer believes. Because he no longer believes, he's more of an atheist. Uh, from what from what other people have said, uh, I would say that he is of Jewish descent. He's not actually a Jew anymore. But what I had, but what I said before is that the the Canaanites hid within the Jewish community. So it's more than likely that 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 George Soros was what was part of, of of a a Canaanite system, and this is what we see emerges into the West. Uh, we see the Canaanite system emerge as Kabbalah. Uh, the Kabbalah system, as you begin to understand it, you begin to sort of study it, and this is that you, you follow you, tr you trace it back through uh, Newton, you trace it back through Le Leibniz, through Planck, and all these other characters. Uh, who are ironically scientists? They're a major. They form a major por portion of the so-called Renaissance, the Enlightenment, uh, that had nothing to do with uh, uh, human value. It had to do with their sense of belief in the beyond. Again, they they, they were Gnostics, and, and Gnostics are simply the, the, the practitioners practitioners of knowledge. But then you had to go back and decide, well, what's the, what's that knowledge? Well, you have two forms of knowledge. You have one. One is the knowledge of Satan. This is those Luciferians. That's that, that's and that follows under uh, what can be also be said. It could be uh, Osiris, the, the all-seeing eye of Osiris. Uh, this is where you get. This is where you get uh, a large chunk of the whole bit of the uh, Masonic eye. Well, that's that's uh, that's the all-seeing eye of Osiris. Um, the uh, most of your Mediterranean have this. You go with the Mediterranean, and you see all these fishing boats, and they got this eye on it. Well, that's the evil eye. That's the mul in, in, in Italian. That's the maloch, right? The, the, the evil eye. You're giving people the evil eye. <laughs> well, that's this is this is how this sort of this belief this what what, what now is called um, superstition gets in there. But the thing is, if a person believes this stuff, and they have some degree of experience with it. Uh, the beyond is given power by your belief. The more you believe in something, the more it works. Uh, this is how a lot of magic works. Magic works about belief. It's about what do you, what do you actually believe in. If you believe in something strong enough, then it's going to work. Uh, but I said, what happens? All this stuff is kept secret. None of this stuff was intended to be to end and end up in the greater society. Now these groups, as well and, and as well as the Catholics, were all trying to engineer society. They were creating society. And the thing is, is what happens? The, the the Catholics set up their thing. They they ran their thing for seven hundred years. They traipsed around Europe and then eventually into the Middle East and with their war machine and and conquered everything. They, they conquered in the name of God. Well, you hear, we've heard that before. The jihad. Well, the Catholics did the exact same thing, but they did. Their jihad has lasted seven hundred years. I mean, the 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 the, the Muslims did jihad for seven hundred years. It went through bits and pe it went through periods, and you have you have periods where. Where the Muslims, depending on, on the group you're following, whether it's uh, a, a Sunni or Shia, you go back into the history and you'll find something completely different, completely different from what you're being told in the in your textbooks. I mean, it, 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 Muhammad wasn't a Sunni. Muhammad was a Shia. The Shia weren't Arabs. They were uh, they were uh, <laughs> Persians, and Persia was one of these ancient empires. This is where you had Babylon. This is where you had the Sumerians. Uh, you had the bearded gods. You had the Anunnaki. I mean, you wonder why uh, uh, Iran is the target of Israel in the United States, which is fully funded on the Masonic basis of the all seeing of uh, all seeing eye of uh, uh, Isis and believes in the god Set, the Babylonian gods. They have a full thing on, on Babylonian gods. Why do you think they talk about Babylonian gods so much? Simply because this is what they believe. And guess where the Babylonian gods are? Iran. They're not after oil. They're not after land. 
in terms of you know stru- uh, 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 realistic that that's that strategic they're after magic and the thing is you see you see this in the in the structure of the structure of uh, of uh of Washington D.C. Washington D.C. is nothing more than a magic amulet. The entire city is laid out according to a Masonic grid. You're not going to go looking for tiny little symbols. The entire city of Washington D.C. is that is, is that. To say that that oh this has nothing to do with religion. Oh sure it does. Why do you think Washington D.C. is the shape that it's in, in terms of the structural shape? Oh, it has not. You're, you're seeing this shape. You're seeing the Masonic symbols in there. You're seeing the, the, the city uh, uh, completely structured around, along along those lines. And you're saying that it, it, that, that the United States and Washington D.C. has nothing to do with Gnosis, nothing to do with uh, uh, religion. Sorry, you're just not seeing the reality. <laughs> and but but the thing is, these things are again they're complicated because. The definitions often shift. It depends on who you talk to. But this is sort of the, this is in some cases the, some of the nature of gnosis. That gnosis is simply the word, gnosis is simply the Greek word knowledge. So when you talk about oh gnosis, oh which gnosis? Early Christian gnosis, which was fundamentally different from everybody else. And I say say that because it was. All the other gnosis, which we can call pagan gnosis, and this is what's commonly used for this, includes Western Christianity. Because the the Protestants, instead of you know going back to the original structure of of, of the early Christian church, decided simply to get rid of the Pope but keep the church structure for itself. And so it kept all the powers, all the understanding of of human levels in terms of the hierarchy, the establishment, and of course the people who were undesirables. These were the untouchables. They were the underclass, and, and these were your animals, your defectives, the ones who had committed these seven deadly sins and would never be saved. And this, of course, because these people were animals, uh, this included uh, anyone who was dark who was not properly white. This was the Aryan theory, This is the, which is now has been reimagined. The Aryan theory is still there, but it's been reimagined. What it's, what's it called today? It's called the Indo-European theory. What's the Indo-European theory? It has the, the the Europeans were the original white people who came out of Iran, out of the they, and they were directly related to the Anunnaki. This is the word, and that you'll find that that's exactly within 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 the theoretical textbooks, the, the 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 works and the writings of the Nazis. The Nazis SS were completely based on this Sumerian understanding of, that of the Aryan race, the Aryan Brotherhood. And the thing is, the bizarre thing is, you have people like uh, uh, Sheikh Carl from Sheikh, the Sheikh Tards singing the national anthem of the uh, of the Aryan Brotherhood, and he's a Mormon. <laughs> is there any is there any concern about this in terms of uh, not necessarily being oh he's you know but why there's a, there is a, there is a question as to why he's singing the, the song of the uh, of the Aryan Brotherhood. But again, this is this is you know, this is part of the nature of research is go, going through and look at these things. I said the, so. The Protestants never got rid of their their sort of pagan background, and that's what this was: was a pagan background. It wasn't the Christian background? The Christian background was something completely different. The Christian background was you were connected directly to Christ. That when you were baptized, you put on Christ, you wear Christ, you become Christ. Every person. Without losing your particular identity, even though you had all these different people uh, becoming uh, like Christ, becoming uh, connected to Christ, becoming one with Christ, rather than becoming one with the universe. Uh, and this is, is the, 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 go back and sort of qualify this. It's the same path as you have in Hinduism, Buddhism. Well, what is it? You have to be selfless. You have to be uh, uh, self-sacrificing. You have to have love. You have to, all these different things, including your fasting and this and that. Uh, and at the end of it, instead of becoming enlightened or part of the universe, which you meld into the background and become part of the positive and negative uh, uh, energies, you become one with God. 
That's a fundamental, fundamental difference. So if you're doing the same thing, you're doing the fasting, you're doing the meditation, you're doing all these different things, do you want to be part of the creation and eventually just disappear, you know, melt into the background, or do you want to become one with God and mean keep your identity in terms of your individual identity? It's your choice. You know, this is the early Christian church. It's a choice of what path you want to walk. And you'll find that in the ancient archives, you'll talk, you'll hear the the, the early before two thousand eight. You hear the saints, the, the who have left their writings behind, talk about the path. They talk about Christ as a path. They don't talk them about Christ as a religion. It's a path you follow. The religion became the accessories. You know, the traditions of the church became the accessories. The fundamental core understanding of the early Christian church was the path. If you're not following on the path of Christ, everything else doesn't matter. But unfortunately, this is what the, 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 the Catholics and the Protestants didn't understand it. So they kept the church but they got rid of Christ. Same. This is what happened with with, with Jews. Why are the Jews contempt, condemned? Because they got rid of Christ. They got rid of their Messiah, and kept the church structure. They kept, they kept and maintained the, the establishment. As long as you maintain the establishment, from a Christian perspective, you're no longer part of Christ. You're part of something else. You're part of the world. In order to become part of Christ, you have to separate yourself from the world. You have to leave it. You have to, as much as you can, leave it behind. That, and you walk the path of Christ. But then again, this is this is something that's not not that well understood. I had it just the camera there. It's not that well understood. And so what happens as time rolled on, and you had the Protestants, you know, keeping up the the, the crime and punishment, the the levels of society. This is what the humanists did. And the humanists came in just, just uh, you know, just as the Protestants were taking over in 1700 AD, and this is where you have the sailing of the, May, of, of the Mayflower into the United States. Uh, you then eventually had uh, you actually had the uh, uh, creation of the United States in terms of the revolution, which was again a, it, it was a humanist revolution to a certain degree. It was they used humanist ideals, but the reality was this was. An evolution of a, basically the Masonic religion. This was the United States was the first Masonic empire, and this is what happened in France as well. It was the same thing, and this is where your humanists would come out of. Humanists would come out of these Masonic societies, and it was designed because it was understood that the people down below they still had the concept of the people down below, the rankings within society. Uh, and this goes back to uh, Plato understood this. Socrates understood this. You had the gold people, the silver people. You had bronze, and below you had the iron. These are the people of the earth. And the people of the earth would never elevate to anything else other than things. There was no crossing of the classes. If you were born in earth, you stayed as earth. You were, if you were born in bronze, you would stay in bronze. If you were born in silver, you would, would stay in silver. If you were born in gold, you'd stay in gold. And there was a separation between them. This is seen in in, in Aang, uh, the last Avatar. On Nickel, uh, uh, you see it on Nickelodeon. Uh, you have the city of Ba Sing Sing, Ba, ba, ba Sing Se. What, what you see all these walls, the wall, a city of concentric rings. And you have on the outer side, uh, on the outer outer walls, you have a whole section of the city that is for artisans, all these lower class people. And as you go through the walls. You have upper class people. You, you go up the classes, and there's a there is a strict separation between the classes, because the people who are not of the proper uh, racial origin, right? They're, again, again, this this specifically for uh, the European understanding of things. Uh, these people would never be considered to be human. They would be subhuman. This is how this you understand this. If you go into the uh, Judaica, you understand. Uh, the Talmud and look at the status of a goyim. Understand Goya within Judaica, and you understand the origins of the base class system based in uh, genetic structure. This is human structure. So why create humanism? Because if you understand magic, magic is limited to those who have a particular 
calling or this is a you're, you're endowed with the enlightenment. You're able to see this stuff. This is the Illuminati. And those who have that structure, those who have that capacity, are need to need to be separated from those who don't have the capacity. The ones who don't have the capacity, the, the ones who simply exist, they don't have their spiritual structure intact, they exist as fodder. They exist for no particular reason, and you can do whatever you want to them. Because they have no fundamental existence. This is what you're seeing now with COVID. It's the same thing, the same structure. And so this is how this is how racism emerges. If you're not part of, part, part of the proper class, then you're not you don't have the right to exist. Or you're an animal. You're the, you're the person. You're the people, the, the sheeple, the, the, the cattle. These are the animals, like, like, like the holy cow, the holy sheep, the holy you know lamb, the, this, the, the holy goat. These are the ones who are going to be sacrificed. When you have your sacrifices to the gods, these are the people who are going to be sacrificed. Look at how many how many of the uh, you go into the anthropology, you go into archaeology. How many sites do we see people being killed and murdered, being sacrificed to the gods, and particularly war gods? War is it, war is not is not uh, simply a a religious thing. It's not about about uh, capturing territory. It's also a Gnostic understanding where this is. The sacrifice. This is a sacrifice to the war gods. The war gods demand blood. And so what happened? The Protestants kept the, the Protestants kept us up. They kept up the war god. They kept up the Salvation Army as an actual army. This is where you get in from the Catholics. You have the Knights Teutonic. Who are the Knights Teutonic? They're the Masons. They're the Knights Hospitals. They're the Knights Templars. Go look at the history of where the Masons come from. You'll understand this. This is all no season. The thing is, this structure is still there today. Humanism was a distraction. It was a way to get people away from the magic because the magic is limited. You want to keep more magic for yourself? Get the rest of the people away. And so, gnosis becomes extremely important because it's, it's part of the reason why things are done. But the problem is the large chunk of the Gnostic understanding is hidden and more or less forbidden. So it's not going to come out in your standard cl uh, classroom structure. This is something you have to go look for, and you find it in bits and pieces, fragments, all over the place. So people, why do this then? Well, for one, if you're an adventurous person, if you like puzzles, this is the ultimate puzzle. If you like scavenger hunts, well, in order to find the pieces of the puzzle, you now have a scavenger hunt. You have to decode things. You have to sort of look at this and that. And there's a number of things you have to do in order to find all the bits and pieces that are all over the place. And eventually you have to assemble it all together and make sense of all the different pieces, the pieces you have. This is the problem with the conspiracy theorists. Is the conspiracy theorists have some of the pieces of the puzzle. This is why you don't ignore them. They do have some of the pieces of the puzzle, but they put them together wrong. The picture they get from the pieces they have is wrong. The pieces may not be wrong, but the puzzle, the, but, but the picture they put together with these pieces is wrong. And there's more to this, and then I'm going to leave this for the next uh, uh, few episodes. To understand that in your in your literature, in your plays, there are hidden secrets that you will never know and never understand. But I will give you a hint into them. As we move on next week, we'll probably next uh, not next week. Uh, uh, next time, probably uh, Wednesday night, if I'm out here doing this, the next one will look into the story of Frankenstein because that is an interesting one because it does have a real history behind it. Anyways, see you. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life.